Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Monoret Perforos Bronze Blooded deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 5 mana 7 6 legendary enchantment creature god that's indestructible but only turns into a creature if our devotion to red is at least 5, then says other creatures we control have haste, and for twin red we can put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from our hand onto the battlefield and we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, so kind of like a sneak attack effect, and our deck is filled with expensive creatures that we can cheat into play with Perforosis ability to get an immediate impact and deal a lot of damage in the process. So step one is to get Perforos in play, which is why the early ramp is so important. So we've got a whole bunch of two mana ramp artifacts alongside Ornithopter of Paradise in the creature slot, and Wily Goblin, which provides two red devotion as well as making a treasure token. And then looking at our non-creature spells, at one mana we've got Lightning Bolt as early removal, and then a two mana Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone, all to help us ramp. Shadow Skull Smashing can be a land or a removal spell. And at 3 mana we've got more ramp with the Celestus, Skyclave Relic, Mana Geode, Letter of Acceptance, Heraldic Banner which also pumps our red creatures, Dragon's Horde which can draw a bunch of extra cards if we can put some dragons in play, and Altar of the Pantheon also quite synergistic with our god commander. Then we've got some sweepers to help us catch back up if the opponent has an aggressive start. So we've got Sweltering Suns, which can also be cycled for 3 mana. Anger of the Gods deals 3 and exiles all creatures in the process. And then we've got some extra utility from our lands here. Valakut Awakening can be played tapped, or we can put any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library, and then draw that many cards plus one, so we can maybe get rid of extra lands or ramp artifacts once we have Perforous in play to look for additional creatures to cheat into play, or maybe just hard cast at that point. We also have Kazul's Fury, which can help us sacrifice a creature, so it deals damage equal to its power to any target, can be a nice way to close out the game, or can once again be played as a tapped land. Then Chandra Torch of Defiance can come down and act as removal right away with the minus 3 dealing for damage, but most importantly can also help us ramp with the plus 1 adding double red to our mana pool. Then Storm's Wrath an extra sweeper dealing 4 to each creature and each planeswalker. And Iron Crank Feet is also quite synergistic with Perforos, as for 4 mana we get to add 7 mana, can only cast one more spell this turn. So if we can play a ramp artifact on turn 2 or turn 3, then we can cast a turn 4 Iron Crank Feet with 1 extra mana from our lands, Plus we get 7 mana, meaning we can cast Perforos and still have 3 mana remaining to at least use the ability once, which can uh, potentially already cheat a big creature into play. So the extra mana from feet can certainly come in handy, or we can just use it to ramp out a big 6 or 7 mana card. And then looking at our creatures, we already mentioned Wally Goblin and Ornithopter of Paradise. At 3 mana Bonecrusher Giant we can use the Adventure to deal 2 damage, and also just a nice 4-3 creature. Then we've got Seasoned Pyromancer, which we usually want to play once we're empty-handed to draw two cards, can also help us find more big creatures to cheat into play. And then Goblin Chain Whirler adds three devotion, so quite synergistic with Perforos in that sense, as well as dealing one damage to each opposing creature and Planeswalker when it enters. Then at 4 mana we've got Delina, Wild Mage, which can potentially copy a creature when it attacks, and if we get lucky can copy multiple creatures. So if we can combine that with a large creature that we put in play with Perforos, we can potentially have a very explosive turn. And then Rekindling Phoenix, a 4-3 flyer that when it dies turns into an 0-1 red elemental creature token that will return the Rekindling Phoenix from our graveyard to the battlefield on the following turn. So even if we sacrifice it to Perforos, we will still get back Rekindling Phoenix afterwards. So we can essentially cast it for 3 mana instead of 4. And then at 5 mana we've got Demanding Dragon, a 5-5 flyer that when it enters deals 5 damage to the opponent or makes them sacrifice a creature. Glorybringer is a 4-4 flyer that can attack and exert to deal 4 damage to a non-dragon creature an opponent controls, and then won't untap during its next untap step. We've got Ilhark, a 6-6 trampler that when it attacks can put a creature from our hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, and then afterwards we can put it back into our hand. We've got Neheb the Eternal, a 4-6 with Afflict 3, and at the beginning of our post-combat main phase we add red for each one life our opponents have lost this turn, so we can potentially cheat Neheb into play alongside another creature if we have 6 mana, and then we can still make a whole bunch of red mana in our second main phase to maybe hard cast another expensive creature afterwards. 
Then Ox of Agonos can refresh our hand by drawing 3 after discarding our hand when it enters, can also be escaped out of the graveyard. Siege Gang Commander will leave behind 3 1 1 tokens. We've got Surtle and Flinger, a 4 6 a giant berserker, that when it attacks we can sacrifice another creature, and if we do, the Flinger deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target, and if the sacrificed creature was a giant, it deals twice that much damage instead, and we do have a couple giants at the top end as well. Then Terror of the Peaks, a 5-4 flyer that when another creature enters, it will deal damage equal to that creature's power to any target, so it can also be very powerful. Zalto, Fire Giant Duke, is a 7-3 Trampler, that's also a giant, so synergizes with the Flinger we saw earlier. And when it is dealt damage, we also get to venture into the dungeon for what it's worth. And Cavalier of Flame is a 6-5 that when it enters lets us discard any number of cards to draw that many cards, so it can once again help us get rid of lands and ramp artifacts to find more big creatures. Then at 6 mana, there's Book Devour, a 4-5 Trampler, that when it deals combat damage to a player we get to discard all the cards from our hand and then draw that many. We've got Bone Pit Brute, a 4-5 with Menace, that when it enters can give a creature plus 4 plus 0 until end of turn, including itself. We've got the Combustible Gearhulk, a 6-6 with First Strike, that when it enters will often let us draw 3 cards, otherwise we get to mill the top 3 cards, and then deal damage equal to the total mana value of those cards to the opponent, which can quickly add up in this deck. We've got Earth Cult Elemental, a 6-6, that when it enters will make the opponent sacrifice a permanent most likely. A Tiley Primal Storm is a 6-6 that can provide card advantage when it attacks. Immortal Phoenix is quite synergistic here as a 5-3 flyer that when it dies returns to our hand, so we can keep cheating it into play with Perforos to deal the opponent 5 damage. Inferno of the Star Mount is a big 6-6 flying dragon with haste that cannot be countered and has fire breathing. Then there's Lathless Dragon Queen, which also rewards us for putting additional dragons into play. So we can maybe activate Perforos, put Lathless in play, activate Perforos again, put a second dragon into play, and generate a 5-5 dragon token in the process. Then we've got Morog Fury of Akuma, which could let us take an extra attack step, which is quite synergistic if we can play a land after playing Morog. We've got Olivia's Attendance, a 6-6 with Menace, that when it deals damage creates that many blood tokens, which we can use to maybe improve our hands. Burning Sun's Avatar is a 6-6 Dino that adds 3 Devotion, and when it enters it deals 3 damage to an opponent and 3 damage to a creature. We've got the Goliath, a 6-6, saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield, we may put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Goliath, where X is that creature's power. So if we cheat multiple creatures in play, we want to start with the Goliath, so it can pick up extra counters. Angrath's Marauders is also quite powerful, as it will double all the damage our permanents would deal. We've got Cinderheart Giant, a 7-6 Trampler, that when it dies deals 7 damage to a creature an opponent controls chosen at a random. It's also quite synergistic with Perforos making us sacrifice the giant. There's Dragon Mage, a 5-5 flyer, that when it deals damage to a player we get to draw 7 cards. After discarding Hellkite Punisher, a 6-6 Dragon with Fire Breathing. Siege Dragon, a 5-5 flyer, that when it enters can destroy a wall the opponent controls, and when it attacks it deals 2 damage to each creature without flying that player controls, so it can also be a nice board wipe. Then Terror of Mount Velas will give our creatures double strike when it enters, and a 5-5 flying double strike himself. There's Yidaro, Wandering Monster, an 8-8 Trampler with Haste that can be cycled for 2 mana if we need to hit our land drops early. There's Dracoseth Maw of Flames, a 7-7 flyer that when it attacks deals 4 damage to any target and 3 damage to each of up to 2 other targets, so it can also be quite devastating. Meteor Golem can destroy any target no land permanent when it enters. Gate Colossus, an 8-8 that cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. There's Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, the 10-10 Indestructible, that when it attacks makes the opponent exile the top 20 cards of their library. And Metalwork Colossus, a 10-10, that can also potentially be returned from our graveyard if we sacrifice two artifacts. And then a mana base is very straightforward, 36 basic mountains alongside a Den of the Bugbear and a Castle Embereth, plus all the extra dual face cards we mentioned earlier. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Minsk, Beloved Ranger, and my hand's okay. We'll need an extra land or two, but we've got some big creatures to cheat in, and then Pyromancer to refresh our hand, potentially. And now with the Terror, if we can set up a turn where we play Lathless with Perforos and Terror, it could be quite explosive indeed. Bard class, or opponent playing lots of legendaries. So that must be 
pretty nice card for the opponent to start out with. Luckily, he found a land, so if we can find another land next turn, we could have a pretty amazing turn with Lathless and Terror. If not, probably play Celestus and then cheat like a Siege Gang into play to stem the bleeding on the ground a little bit. Opponent off to an aggressive start. Wow. Tashik and Rada. So I'm almost dead here. But an untapped lands might one hit KO my opponent here. So a big draw step coming up. And there's a land, okay. I didn't do the math, but let's see if this is enough. Lathless first. Then Terror. Which will make a dragon with Lathless. Creatures gain double strike. And by the way, a Perforos turns into a creature. And yeah, that's 46 damage, so I would say that's enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Domri, Chaos Bringer. And we do have an early board wipe with Anger, but I'm missing some sort of mana acceleration. So I don't know if I can keep this. Do have a couple draw steps to maybe find one. But I'm not doing much besides casting Anger, which may or may not be good. Alright, this is better. I still have my Anger, but I picked up a mana geode. Still have some big creatures to cheat into play. And the Scry 1 for Mana Geode, also very helpful. Dragon Mage could refresh my hand as well. So, liking my chances so far. And this, unfortunately, a Cyclops, not a Giant, to synergize with Flinger. As her opponent plays Clothis. And then I really want to Scry into a land here as opposed to playing Altar. And Yudaro is not good enough. There's Domri. Opponent also up to 4 Devotion already. Did not find a land, unfortunately, so... Play Altar, and yeah, we're gonna be a couple turns slower than we would like. But should be able to play Perforos next turn, at least. So this could hurt Halana and Elena with an extra counter. Luckily no other creature to put in play. Alright, time for Perforos. And there's no shortage of big creatures in hand, so I really still want an untapped land, so I can put two in play next turn. We've got Meteor Golem, which could be used as removal. Great Henge turns on Clothis. Yeah, this is not going to be good for me. So Clothis picks up three counters. And we take them. Alright, found land at least. So I can put in Bone Pit Brute to kill Domri, Meter Golem, either killing Great Henge or Partners. That's probably the plan here. At 27, I don't think I'm killing my opponent in this spot. I guess there is Goliath, which is a giant. Flinger's a giant. So how does the math check out? Put in Goliath, put in Flinger. This picks up four counters. Perforos has two devotion, but if I sacrifice Goliath, it would no longer be a creature. So it's not actually quite enough to kill my opponent. So I think we wait on the Flinger-Goliath line until next turn. And then for now, go with Meteor Golem plus Bone Pit Brute. And probably destroy the partners to be safe. You expect me to tuck my tail between my legs? And hopefully that's enough to survive a turn. And maybe next turn we can set up a cool line with Flinger and Goliath. This 
So there's Domri again. And yeah, we get to untap. Opponent is at 28. So let's reiterate. Put Goliath in play, followed by Flinger. Goliath picks up four counters, up to 10. I attack. And then this would deal 20 damage. Still only 24. So four points short. So yeah, maybe I still wait a turn on it. And then for now, Perforos puts in... I guess Cavalier can discard Anger. Also animates Perforos. Pick up a land. And uh, I can put in an Inferno of the Star Mount, perhaps. We also would have been a little bit short if I went with Goliath into Cavalier, turn on Perforos. And this can go face. This takes out Domri. This can go face. So your point's at 14, so now they should be within range of the Flinger Goliath combo. And there's still Dragon Mage to potentially have fun with, but it's probably not going to come down to that. Ravager Worm does turn on Clothis, so that's pretty close to killing me. So we would be at one. Colvori luckily doesn't have haste. All right, so we're at one. And now it's time for the big finish. Goliath into Flinger. Attack and sacrifice Goliath, dealing 20 to their face. Alright, so a satisfying ending to a pretty cool game overall. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing Ilharg the Race Boar, so they've got a very similar game plan to ours. And we drew a hand with a ton of interaction. Storm's Wrath, not the most synergistic with Ornithopter, plus our opponent could also have some removal here. So I don't actually think this hand's all that great. And all right, this is a little bit better. I can maybe put away the Ornithopter with Valakut Awakening at some point. And Guardian Idol as early acceleration. So turn three, we might Awakening. As your opponent plays a Maze Might Tomb. Yeah, I think uh, going for an Awakening here, keeping the basic Mountain maybe, or we can gamble and get rid of the Mountain in the hopes of finding another one. Which is relatively likely, but opponent's got the Banner, so next turn we're gonna see Ilharg. And then do I want to hang on to Glorybringer? It's not a bad card, but it doesn't deal with Ilharg, unless we want to combine it with Lightning Bolt, but that feels a little slow. Although I guess that's an answer to Ilharg. Or we can just work towards our own game plan of finding some big creatures to cheat and play with Perforos, and I just get rid of everything here. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. All right. This seems like an improvement. So get to play Perforos. And then next turn I can cheat two creatures into play. And deal a substantial amount of damage. So how about... I go with Zalto and Demanding Dragon, so Perforos also turns into a creature.
opponent's probably going to take 5. And then they're scheduled to take 19, so they would be at 1. So, then we should be able to finish them off with the Gate Colossus, maybe. There's also a Guardian Idol we can animate to maybe dull the last points. But now our opponent gets to hit me back with Ilhark, so we'll see. I wouldn't mind top decking that Lightning Bolt now, but it's somewhere at the bottom. Burn down the house to make a bunch of devils, which luckily don't block Gate Colossus. Does Ilharg attack or stay back is a question. Alright, Ilharg and one devil attack. So our opponent's hoping to block with the devils to not take lethal here. And what can they cheat and play? A Burning Sun's avatar, not bad. So... We fall to six. Opponent was a few points shy of lethal. But uh, we should be able to close out the game here, especially with Angras Marauders doubling our damage. We've got quite a bit. Might as well go all the way. All right, but our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Joda, so the five-color crazy ramp deck. And my hand really needs a couple lands. I do have an altar for ramp, which is nice, but still need to hit those land drops as well. So it's high risk, high reward. Let's give it a shot. So two lands and three draw steps is what I'm hoping for. That's a dragon. All right, really need a line now. Opponent ramping with an emergent sequence. That'll work. Get to play my altar. And there's Joda. And there's a Lance, okay. So we both get to play. Put Perforos in. And opponent could already activate Joda here. So we'll see what surprises they have in store for us. It's gonna be Jauncey. Not bad. Angras Marauders. So if I put Cavalier in, I can most likely find another land. So Cavalier... And then what else would I want to put in play? What's the weakest card here? Probably the Rekindling Phoenix. And I can maybe get rid of the Sirtland Flinger as well. So close call. So put Cavalier in. And then maybe just get rid of everything except Gear Hulk and Marauders. Alright, found a lane. So if I were to attack without putting Marauders in first. My opponent takes it, then I can surprise kill them by doubling my damage. So I think that's what I'll do here. Otherwise, if I put Marauders in first, my opponent could survive by jumping Perforos. Opponent takes it, and that's where we get them by putting Marauders in. Sweet, so... A little bit of mind games here in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Marrow, Gnar, so most likely a red tribal deck here. And, uh, well, if we can cheat a Dracoseth in play, we can maybe deal with a bunch of rats at once, so I'll give it a shot. 
got Ornithopter and Mana Jewet for ramp, so we can try and get Perforous down quickly. But Rat Colony can quickly add up, so... Being on a play is also very important in this type of matchup. Two mana for a Crashing Drawbridge, okay. And next turn we're scheduled to play Perforos, and then Dragon Mage is not bad, don't need Valakut Awakening. Already have six mana sources to activate Perforos twice, and Drakoseth is going to be the big card we're working towards here. So the rat gains haste, so it can hit us for two. Oof, and a Terror of Mount Velas, also quite exciting here. So... There's a chance I can just kill my opponent next turn between Dracoseth and Terror. Opponent goes for an Icon of Ancestry, naming a rat. And another rat colony. Okay, so we're taking eight. Activate Perforos. Put in Dracoseth. Put in Terror. And then our opponent already concedes to Dracoseth, but Terror of Mount Velas would give us a total of 19 damage times 2, plus Dracoseth would either wipe their board or deal additional damage here. So it should be enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, so a historic artifact heavy deck. And my hand is okay. Don't expect Chain Whirler to kill much, but it does provide some devotion at least. And then I just need to draw an extra land or two to give us the smooth start we're hoping for. Storm's Wrath could clean up Joyra. So next turn, probably Celestus. And then hoping for a couple more lands. As Consider puts Grape Shot in the graveyard, so opponent is some sort of storm deck. Not sure if we need to expect many counter spells, but no response to the Celestas at least. And our opponent mostly tapping out for a Chromatic Lantern, so should be able to resolve Perforos. And then next turn, we could have some fun. Joyra into a, a zero mana artifact with Ornithopter, draws a card. That's okay. Stone Coil. There's only so many free artifacts they can play as their opponent passes. Okay, so I've got some options, including Terror of the Peaks into Angrath's Marauders. And then we get to attack with all three creatures, so our opponent has to pretty much double chump to survive. That seems decent. Um, yeah, I think we'll do that. Alright, I guess our opponent just took it instead. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Massacre Girl. So it should be a decent matchup considering we don't really play any small creatures into it. But this hand's not going to do without any acceleration. This is much better. I might finally see Dragon Mage in action. And we'll play this tapped. So we can play Perforos with the mana we currently have, assuming no discard. Which your opponent may be considering here. Nope, just a Shambling Ghast. Terror of Mount Velas has been one of our better finishers so far. And a Funeral Longboat, that's fine. I guess vehicles mean they're less likely to die to their own Massacre Girl.
So it does seem to have a bit of a sacrifice theme as well. Longboat gets crewed, so we take four. And we get to play Perforos, which Mono Black has a hard time answering. Since it's indestructible, it cannot be taken out by the two mana Disenchant in Black. The one card I can think of is like a Faruka's Libation, which makes a sacrifice an enchantment. But haven't seen that card since Theros Draft. So, next turn we can double activate. And depending on the board state, we could deal quite a bit of damage. Opponent leaves Shambling Gas on defense. So that can chump Perforos if needed. Because the plan was to go Terror plus Dragon Mage. I think that's still the plan, since I wouldn't mind drawing 7, and the Goliath just gets chumped anyways. And then our opponent will still take 20, and they'll lose their Shambling Gasts. And most importantly, we get to draw. And because it has double strike, I actually want to go full control in case I draw lightning bolt, so I can cast it between first strike and regular damage after the first dragon mage trigger. Because this is going to happen twice. No lightning bolt, so regular damage happens. Opponent's at 5. And there's an ox waiting in the graveyard to be reanimated as well. Okay, so looks like we're good to pass. And there's no shortage of creatures to deal lethal next turn. Still at 15, so not sure how our opponent gets out of this. Lots of cheap, expendable creatures, as you can see. So Massacre Girl kind of meant as a board wipe. But yeah, this Perforous strategy is pretty unique in that it doesn't really play any cheap creatures, so early removal spells and sweepers aren't effective against it. You need Artifact Destruction to slow us down, and there's not too many answer to Perforous other than counter spells. So our opponent does hit us for 8. But that's not going to be enough here. Cursebound Witch from Alchemy. And how do we want to end the game? I guess Siege Dragon is the most straightforward one. Or a Trampling Cinder Heart. And our opponent scoops it up. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Rowan, Scholar of Sparks, and Will, Scholar of Frost. And my hand's okay. Hopefully pick up a land or two, and then we can maybe play turn three Chandra to ramp into my other stuff. And Goliath looks quite good with a Metal War Colossus, adding 10 counters to it. Ornithopter of Paradise could help. Opponent's got the Arcane Signet, and we drew all the ramp artifacts. Alright, so at the very least, next turn I can go Mind Stone into an Ornithopter. Although Chandra into Mind Stone would be even better. Opponent's gonna seize the spoils, discarding Sweltering Suns, which we also have in hand. And there's my land, perfect, so. Not too many counter spells to worry about here. And now I can play Perforos next turn, and if I draw land, even activate it right away and potentially turn it into a creature. Although Perforos himself will still have summoning sickness, so it won't be able to attack, as it only gives other creatures haste. 
Alright, opponent's got a Thundering Rebuke to knock down Chandra's loyalty. Do they have another burn spell to finish it off? They don't. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there is the potential of a counter spell here. But let's say we add mana first. In case of a more conditional counter spell. And then I can still play a mana creature afterwards to maybe play Perforce again next turn. Side coming. Yep, that works. And then probably go with Ornithopter. So they countered Perforos once. We can still maybe replay it. If they counter it twice, it's going to be more problematic. Alright, opponent taps out for Burgi into strategic planning. So should be able to resolve Perforos now. And get the party started. Alright, opponent keeps cantripping with Burgi. And passes back. Alrighty, so let's see if I add two mana, play Perforos. I guess I can still play a Wily Goblin afterwards too, that's fine. Today's my lucky day. That will turn Perforos into a creature. So that can play defense and protect Chandra. And yeah, now we can play around counter spells by just activating Perforos instead. Opponent goes for Will. I may be a new Prismari student, but I learn fast. It's gonna shrink down Perforos, still has its ability. Let's talk. And I think twice. So, can I combo kill my opponent if they're tapped out here? Huh? Looks like Perforos is sent packing. So, command zone or library? It's second from the top. So, I can potentially find it with Chandra if I jump with Wily Goblin, so I guess library is fine. So, we'll jump. Opponent's got one card left, one red mana floating. So we'll use Chandra to exile the top card. Yep. And play Perforos for five mana now. And then I can still activate Perforos. Or we can cast the Sweltering Suns. If I activate Perforos, can put in one creature to kill Will, although I kind of wanted to save Goliath and Colossus for the same turn. But maybe I'll have to settle for uh, just dealing with her Planeswalker. And then could go with Colossus, which I can also get back if I sack two artifacts. And take out Will. Also could have been worth it to just go face. I guess your opponent's somewhat likely to just cast Memory next turn. But at least we have Perforos in play now. So they play their lands. They can cast Memory and then still have a bunch of mana thanks to Burgi to potentially storm off. But if they let us draw 7, Perforos is very likely to present lethal next turn. Chandra can also still make 2 mana. So we could activate Perforos 3 times. Right, we get to untap. And yeah, let's have some fun. Make mana. Activate to put in Goliath. Followed by a Gate Colossus. 
Now our opponent can still jump with Den of the Bugbear, potentially. But that's fine by me. And an Ox. To draw three. Perforos is a creature. And we'll attack. Alright. And I guess our opponent's given up. Sweet, so... Yeah, our Perforos deck can even battle through a few counter spells if we can generate enough mana. But in general, I would say the blue matchups where our opponent can keep Perforos off the board are probably the most difficult matchups for the deck. And then very aggressive starts could also potentially kill us before we can activate Perforos twice to have a meaningful impact on the game. But we still have a couple sweepers we could draw to stand a chance in those matchups. So yeah, very fun deck and an interesting take on a mono red deck that's maybe different from your typical mono red tribal decks. So give it a shot if you've got the cards for it. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.